Okuma Media's Polity Amtabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled The Contribution of the UDF and People's Power to Our Understanding of Freedom, Part 2. You criticize the UDF 40 for referring to igniting the spirit of active citizenry. So how does this make them xenophobic? I didn't say they're xenophobic, but what I said is when you use a phrase like active citizenry, you must be self-conscious of the atmosphere in the country where xenophobia is widespread. And the Freedom Charter doesn't speak about citizens. It says South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. It doesn't say all citizens. So that the choice of the word active citizenry is an unselfconscious use of words. In politics, we have to be very self-conscious about the words that we use, that we don't use words that are exclusionary. And in the context of the xenophobia that we have in South Africa, we need to be very careful about this. I mentioned in my article that one of the areas where there was people's power in a big way, Atridgeville, now has xenophobia in a big way. So given that situation, people ought to have been careful in the choice of the words that they used and not excluded those who are not citizens. And you also criticize the lack of reference to people's power, also connecting it to the transition and what has unfolded in the post-apartheid South Africa in general, sidelining people's power. So is this a fair criticism? And did they intend that, or was it not an inevitable result of constitutional government? To speak about the meanings of UDF as accountability and transformation, which I agree with as factors, and not mention people's power is shocking. I mean, is one saying that people's power, one of the key features of the 1980s was not part of the legacies of the UDF, uh, where many people died, people took control of the environments, things like that. So it was it, to erase it in your commemoration of the UDF. In most of the writings that has been done by UDF 40 in this period, there's no mention of people's power. Now, how can that be? Now, this is, in my view, in line with the way post-apartheid South Africa has unfolded, even from the period of the state of emergency, where most of the leadership, 30, 40,000 people were arrested, and a lot of people's power was crushed. The mass democratic movement emerged, and some people suggest it's the same as the UDF. Now, important as the MDM was to emerge there and speak, have, give a voice to what the UDF would have done, it wasn't the same as having links to the ground, to organizations in the communities. So the MDM started that situation where the people were represented without being there themselves. The negotiations period continued it in many ways because people spoke on behalf of the people and the people were brought into history that of the time Sometimes when we wanted to break a deadlock in negotiations, people were called out into the streets. So that the whole transition involved that. And after that, we voted and we then had a people's government, so-called. And the job of those who had been directly involved in politics was to watch and then vote every five years so that the uh, erasure of people's power is an erasure of something which was already not there any longer, 
after the ni- late 1980s. And a lot of people feel unhappy about that. And it needs to be addressed in the commemoration of the UDF in this period. And you speak of the UDF period making a specific contribution to democratic thinking, also referring to the notion of prefigurative democracy and transfer of power. Can you elaborate and explain where the contributions of the UDF period made are now? Well, in the previous interview, I did refer to the fact that the UDF advanced the notion of democracy as not something that you wait for to, for some great moment when you take power and everything else is a preparation for that. They took power there and then. They controlled townships. Police had been kicked out. Sometimes there were abuses. I'm going to come back to that in later versions. Sometimes they did very important things, especially when the whole community was involved. Now, this is different from the emphasis on a moment of transfer or seizure of power, a single decisive moment when everything will happen after that. You aim at that moment when we take power and you treat power as if it's a thing, when in fact, power is a set of relationships and you can start to empower yourselves as the masses before any single moment like the vote. And that was what, on the one hand, the UDF asserted something different, doing taking their own democratic rights there and then, but also implicitly, because I said in the previous interview, orthodoxy still reigned, we still talked talked about seizing power or transfer of power because we haven't made full sense of things now. And my criticism of the UDF 40 advert is it's also not making sense of the UDF 40 years later. And many of these people were themselves involved in people's power. So that's what I'm putting to them. They need to make sense of it. But I'm putting it in a comradely way because People are sometimes doing these things quickly and a lot of pressures on the uh, plate. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's Polity about the contribution of the UDF and people's power to our understanding of freedom at two.